Video game movies and TV shows used to mean that you were about to watch a guaranteed stinker. But it seems like over the past few years, Hollywood's finally cracked the code and delivered some good, even great movie adaptations. So what changed? Why has Hollywood been killing it with your video game adaptations? For the longest time, video games were really underrated when it came to storytelling. It's easy to write off video games as a form of mindless entertainment because that's more or less what it was and still is in a lot of cases. But as more emphasis was put on world building and character development, it became a lot easier to get invested in whatever you were playing. This also meant that video games could be played for dozens or even hundreds of hours. Of course this was true back then as well but for different reasons. And this highlights the first hurdle in adapting video games to the big screen. It's really hard to turn a 20 hour game into a 2 hour movie. Even if you look at just the cutscenes on their own, a lot of times you'll already end up with more than 2 hours worth of content. But the cutscenes only hit as hard as they do because of the world building that's done through gameplay. Using an episodic format gives writers enough time to establish character arcs and build the world they inhabit. I think Fallout does a really good job at this. Now, you may disagree and point to something like the Mario movie, which was less than 2 hours long, but the key difference is that everyone already knows about Mario, at least in some capacity, so viewers aren't going in completely blind. Not everyone knows the story of Assassin's Creed though, so 2 hours isn't nearly enough time to get people to care. With so much ground to cover, nobody wants to waste any time in the real world, because there just isn't enough time to make us care about it. In video games, characters are also able to meet new people and make time to go on side quests, which allow us to learn more about them. This also caters nicely to non-linear storytelling. Like I don't know many gamers who only play through the story when there's an open world to explore or side quests to complete. The whole point of bringing a video game to life on the big or small screen is for fans to see more of the characters they know and love. This means that the characters they're familiar with will look and act like the characters they've seen in their respective video games. Now obviously there's levels to this. Although accuracy is arguably the most important, a little fan service does go a long way. It's icing on the cake and although it's not enough to save an entire adaptation, it can really tie everything together if the movie or show is good enough. Amazon's adaptation of Fallout did an excellent job with this. From the soundtrack to the VAT's camera angles during combat, fans of the game would notice it immediately. And good fan service isn't jarring for the casual viewer either. Honestly, the saying, if you know you know, is a good marker to go by. Take a look at the new Super Mario Bros movie. I mean, this is just great. It doesn't ruin the immersion, but fans of the games are rewarded with a scene that, that pays homage to the game that they love. And that's the most important part, right? Gamers love these games, and they want to love their big screen adaptations. But that's kind of hard to do when the people behind the scenes don't like the source material or the gamers that love them. Like, at all. The topic of toxic fans has been around for a while and it, and it seems like it continues to get brought up when an adaptation of a book, anime, or video game are being discussed. When questioned about toxic fandom in an interview four years ago, Henry Cavill had this to say. I understand what you're saying, but when it comes to fans, it is a fan's right mm -hmm. to have whatever opinion they want to have. And people are going to be upset because, especially when it, you're talking about books or games, because you're never going to be the exact person who they had in their head or who they played on Witcher 3, for example. I don't necessarily consider that toxic. I just consider that passionate. Is it any surprise by so many people, and gamers in particular, why they like this guy? There's obviously extremes when it comes to quote unquote toxic fans, but in today's day and age, it seems like Hollywood is quick to classify any criticism from fans as toxic. This never really made sense to me. In theory, Video game adaptations should print money, because they aren't starting in zero. They already have an established fan base and plenty of story and lore to work off of. But for the longest time, Hollywood just didn't use it. And I think there's a reason for this. Pride. Or worded differently, a sense of superiority. Look, it's good to believe in yourself and your own capabilities as a writer. But a line gets crossed when you think you can write the material about a video game better than the actual source material. It's understandable that people want to use their creativity to make a piece of art that they work on feel like their own. But there's limits you gotta stick to if you're following the source material. So what's the lazy way around this? Don't follow the source material. On the topic of Henry Cavill, I'm sure most of you remember the whole shit show that was Netflix's The Witcher, where it was alleged that he was hard to work with because he had so many issues about the direction of the show 
in comparison to the original material. A lot of worlds like that of The Witcher are very dense and full of content that can be explored. But when it comes to these already established worlds, it seems like writers get worried that the in-depth world building won't resonate with a lot of casual viewers. Like, it'd be too overwhelming and thus only would appeal to hardcore fans. But by revising or dumbing down the source material, you tend to get the worst of both worlds. Fans are unhappy because they feel betrayed, and casual viewers don't like it because… well usually because it sucks. This is something that always surprises me. It's like people forgot that Marvel was able to build this insanely successful cinematic universe off of characters that the majority of people knew nothing about. Oh well, what do I know? I'm just a dumb viewer like you. Which brings me to my final point. When all else fails, always, and I mean always, blame the fans. It's not that the show is not good, it's that the fans are so toxic that people are afraid to change, or whatever other contrived reason they come up with to blame their own customers for not liking their products. That being said, there is light at the end of the tunnel. It seems like with all these recent adaptations, we're finally getting past all that now. And I'm happy that a lot of these adaptations are good, and they deserve to succeed because of it. Because I look at a lot of the flops from the past, and it makes me wonder, who was this even for? But I'm curious to know what you guys think. Have you been enjoying the recent video game adaptations? Which ones have been your favorite, and which ones do you want to see next? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe for more videos like this. I'd also recommend you check out this suggested video on screen now. Thanks for watching and stay winning.